In today's video, I would like to talk with you about my Singer sewing machine. It is the Brilliance model number 6180, and uh, I got it on kind of a whim. I found it in my neighborhood Lidl grocery store, and it was such a great deal. I thought, why not? So I got it, and I've been using it. And today, I'd like to share with you how it is to actually sew with. So stick around. Hello and welcome to My Handmade Lifestyle. This is my YouTube channel and I'm Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes Everywhere Online. I invite you to join us, subscribe to the channel, like today's video, and hang out. It's fun and you will learn so many cool things. The topic of today's video is my Singer Brilliance 6180 sewing machine. As I stated in the opening, I found this machine just by chance grocery shopping at my neighborhood Lidl. You expect to see it at Walmart because Walmart is, you know, like has everything, but I didn't expect it in Lidl. I just happened to see the machine and I thought, how, how bad can it be? It was $99. It had all of the little quilting stitches, but the big thing that it had that I wanted was the ability to uh, move the needle uh, left and right. And I wanted that because I like sewing zipper pouches and zippered bags. And uh, it's really helpful to have a uh, machine needle that you can move left and right to help you really get close to that zipper when you're sewing. So I thought as many bags as I like to sew for a hundred dollars let's try this thing and uh, I asked at the uh, checkout if I don't like the machine what is the return policy and they said well you have 90 days to use it. If you decide that you don't like it after 90 days or before 90 days, bring it back with the receipt and you can return it and get your money back. So I thought, I really have nothing to lose. I could sew on it all summer and uh, see how it does and what I think. And if I don't like it, I'll take it back. Well, here we are. I bought this machine last June, I believe. May or June. And, um, you can see it's still here, so I did keep it. And I actually really like this machine. Let me uh, uncover it and bring it forward so that you can see it. Uh, the machine uh, came with, of course the machine, it also came with an extension cable. And this is really nice. And um, basically the Singer 6180 is designed to be like an entry level quilting machine because it has a lot of decorative stitches. It comes with this nice wide extension table. It does have that ability to uh, move your needle left and right, which is so cool. I absolutely love that about it. And it came with a number of attachments so that you could actually like free motion quilt on this thing. I have not done anything like that. It comes with a fairly extensive um, instruction manual. I did read the book before starting to sew on it. I found it incredibly helpful to get myself going. Um, it, it's it's pretty thorough. So the book is a good book. So you want to make sure that you hold on to that and keep it uh, in a place that you can reference. I'm also going to recommend another book and I have recommended this book in just about every <laughs> sewing video that I do and uh, I'm going to recommend it again because I just am and it's sewing machine magic. This book is excellent. Um, I am like really big on using my local library and um, I check out all kinds of different crafting books and sewing books and knitting books and cookbooks and all kinds of things and I just happened to see this book when I was in there one day and I love it. I've checked it out a number of times and to be honest with you I'm gonna go ahead and buy it because it's such a good reference manual and if you are just kind of getting started with sewing or even if you've sewn for a while there's a lot of things like sewing machine needles and uh, thread types and fabric types and just all kinds of things that are covered in this book that you don't necessarily know about starting out and uh, this book really helped me with 
um, the bobbin case. The machine comes with a front-loading bobbin. It's a bobbin case. You'll find it in this part of the machine. So rather than the drop-in bobbin, it's going to be uh, a bobbin case. But uh, before I get into like the, the technical specs of the machine, let me just say what this machine is really good for. This machine is really good for a beginner. And if you are trying to decide if you really wanna get into sewing or maybe you've done a little bit and you wanna do a little bit more, uh, but budget is a factor and you wanna not overspend while you're trying to decide <laughs> if this is really for you. If you come across this little brilliance machine, it's great for that. It has uh, a ton of decorative stitches, it has buttonholes, it has all kinds of really cool little features, and you can try those things out. When I was trying to decide, because I came home for an afternoon and, and thought for a couple of hours about whether or not to go back and get the machine, I went to one of uh, the sewing groups that I'm in on Facebook and I just casually asked, had anybody seen this machine and, you know, kind of what did they think? Well, you can imagine how that went. So uh, I heard from a lot of people and <laughs> there's like this huge population of, of sewists who uh, hate anything new. So <clears throat> if it's any machine, after maybe 1990. I mean, these people really don't like new machines. Uh, they're gonna tell you it's all junk, it's all crap, it's plastic, it's this, it's that. You need to go back and get a vintage machine and all of your sewing woes will be solved. Okay, if you really need a machine that heavy duty and uh, you like vintage stuff, that's great. But um, this mindset of any machine newer than 30 years old is just a hunk of junk or a boat anchor. It's unfair and it's incorrect. There are great machines out there that are newer machines. And I would recommend for a new person that you get a new machine because then you have something that's current, you have something with a warranty, uh, you have something that uh, other people are going to be sewing on. <laughs> it's it's helpful to have a newer machine. Now, don't go out and break the bank and buy a ten thousand dollar machine out of, off the bat. That's crazy. So, had I listened to the women in the group, uh, I would have been afraid of this machine and not gotten it. But fortunately for for me, I'm super hard headed, and I think for myself, <laughs> and I thought for a hundred dollars, and I have three months to try it out. I'm gonna just jump in and see what I get. And I really wound up loving it. So uh, don't let the older sewist in these groups uh, scare you off from a new machine because it's not all doom and gloom. Uh, now I will say, you know, I don't expect this machine to last me for the next um, even 10 years. Yeah, why would I? They make so many advancements. There are so many new things that come out. Why wouldn't I want to, to go get a new machine in like five or six years? I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't feel like it needs to be a one and done forever choice. So uh, from my perspective, if I get a good three years out of this machine, I think that's a hundred bucks well spent. And I've learned a lot of stuff on it and I enjoy sewing on it. I also teach at uh, jo my local Joann's and I teach uh, sewing and knitting classes. And we have the Singer uh, patchwork that we use uh, in the sewing center and when I teach a beginning sewing class and we use the sewing machines uh, that we have on site, that's what we use. And that is a beautiful machine. And it's like a step up from this brilliance. It has maybe a few more stitches, um, but it can tell you the machine itself is a bit more high quality than this one. Uh, that being said, I still enjoy sewing on this machine, but there is a difference between this one for $99 and that one, which retails, I think at 400, but you can get it on sale if you go when they have the sale for like, 
maybe 250 to 70 something in that range uh, but that is a very nice machine and it has a top loading bobbin unlike the the bobbin case like this one which can be a little bit of a turnoff for people but honestly learning to use the bobbin case it's not all bad it it makes you a more proficient sewist if you can get a machine to run on multiple bobbins so don't be afraid of the bobbin case it's not that bad i was terrified when i saw it at first i'll be honest with you uh, but it's not that bad and this the sewing machine magic book really talked me through it i have since done a video on loading the two different kinds of bobbins so i'm going to link to those check that out if you are at all concerned it's really not as bad as you think and I tend to think that they hold more thread and so you can sew longer in between needing to wind bobbins, which is always nice. So let's take a closer look at this machine and I'm just going to show you the stitches. Um, I'll show you a little bit of how it sews and just kind of give you an overview. I'm going to do a more technical video on threading the machine getting your thread tension right, that type of stuff. I think that's out of the scope of this video, which is just talking about the machine itself. So let's just take a closer look and you can see what, what it has and what it will do. Here's the machine a little bit closer up. And, you know, all machines are kind of the same. They're all a little bit different, but they're all kind of the same. Uh, so uh, the parts of the machine are, you. You know, you load your thread, you're going to thread your machine here. Here's your tension. This is your locking the stitches in button. This is so technical. Um, here's your throat plate and all of that. And over here is where we select our stitches. And this machine is fully electronic. So you're going to use these little arrows to uh, make the number in this window go up and down. And that's how you decide your stitch. So if you come down here and you s decide that you want to stitch maybe, say, number 39, so, and it will have the picture and the number. So then you're just going to type that in here. And this is going to let you uh, change your stitch uh, width and uh, length and also it's going to let you move your needle back and forth so you can see that on the top of the machine it has a place to put your thread here's where you're going to wind your bobbin and i mentioned earlier about having the little quilting table let me show you how to put that on so you just pull this out and this then becomes a, a narrow um, neck and you can sew things like sleeves and cuffs and all of that. In here is where your bobbin lives. So there's your bobbin case. And uh, to put this on, I find it's easier to fold up the little um, stand and then you just slip it in. And there you go. And then you've got all this nice working space. And I will a lot of times use this nice extra working space even if I'm not doing a quilt project because I don't really do a lot of um, quilting stuff. Uh, I do small quilting projects, but nothing big. And uh, But I, I like having this extra space. And then uh, I also use this work light, this art light, and it lets me pull right in with the light so that I can see. And this is really important at night because it's dark in here and I wind up not being able to sew a lot of times until it's late. And this light really lets me get in there and see what I'm doing. You do have a light on here, but it's not that great. There's only so much light output that you can expect from the machine itself. And honestly, even in the daytime, it's really helpful to put this light on uh, so I can see what exactly I'm doing. You can see the difference. The more light, the better, especially as, you know, we get up there and age a little bit. Uh, so this little piece, um, this I pulled from here, and this is where all your tools are. So you open that up, 
and it has uh, your little cleaning tool on this end. It's going to be your um, seam ripper, which is very important. Um, your buttonhole set up and all of your other presser feet. So it comes with a, a nice little selection of presser feet. So all of that stuff is in here. And if we want to go back to that, we just pull this. And line up all of your little tabs and slide it in. And then you're, you're back to where you were. So, um, you know, I think this is a nice weight of machine. A lot of people will complain that it's plastic, but, you know, for $99, I don't know what you expect. Uh, I think it's a nice machine for 100 bucks. Um, I see a lot of people have issues with sewing on it. I think it's because your thread tension is wrong. The biggest thing I can tell you on this machine is if you're going to use this horizontal um, thread, which the machine seems to run um, mostly from this horizontal, because this uh, vertical is kind of short, but you can get a spool on there. But it's, uh, you, you can't like put any top piece on, but it does feed okay. Let me just tell you, the biggest thing that I can share with you on getting this machine set up and running is your thread. If you're going to use this kind of spool, it needs to go on this upright um, spool holder and come feed from the back over. If you're going to use this um, horizontal feed, you're going to need one of these uh, different spools which is uh, one of these. And the reason is because the way the thread is put on this spool versus that spool is very different. Okay, so we're closer up. Uh, the way the thread is on this spool as versus this spool is totally different. And you can see the patterning on this spool of thread versus this spool of thread. Totally different and this horizontal feed is designed to take this style of thread and this vertical feed is designed for this type of thread. Uh, that's just the way it is. That's the way the machines are made and that's how they are. Uh, this is a, kind of a big spool. I've been getting my thread from um, Craftsy. I really, really like their stuff. Uh, I can buy a really huge spool and it lasts a lot longer than these little tiny things that come from uh, my craft store. Uh, this is nice if you want a specific color for something. Um, these are great but um, I like to put something on and just sew on it for a really long time and so I've been buying these mega spools. Let's take a look at how you're going to select your stitches. So this is called the Stitch Overview. And in that window, it's going to show you uh, a number on the left. That number corresponds to whatever number you type in from the stitch that you want to make. And the other two numbers are talking about uh, stitch width and stitch length. Uh, some of the stitches, you're going to be able to adjust that, some of them uh, they're just going to be automatically set up for you. So uh, let's uh, take a look now at the stitches themselves. This is the panel with all of the different stitches that you will have access to on this machine. And it's as simple as uh, picking uh, what stitch you like and then typing that number into the top using the, um, the up arrow keys. So if you want to stitch number 40, you're going to type 40 into the window. It's really that easy. As I come down here and look on my stitch panel, it's going to give me this stitch right here. So this is 42. And what I want you to see is, so as we come back up, Yeah. 
it will automatically set your best uh, length and width. So you don't have to do anything here. Let's just change it and then you can see. See how that changed? So it sets all of that up for you automatically. You don't have to change anything on the width. It will do it for you. Uh, let's set up to do just like a regular zigzag. So I set up for number three, which is right here, and it's saying um, five, but what if I want it to be different? I can change that width, just like that. But the basic that it has is the five. That's the recommended, and I basically sew most everything on their recommended because I feel like the people that designed the machine have set all of these stitches up with optimum tension and width and length and I can just go with that unless it's something you know specific but generally I just use whatever this recommends. So we're on three now let's see what happens when we get a four. Oh so you can see if I get a stitch length four these changed all by themselves. And five, five was the same. We get a six, which is that one, and you can see it changed again. So uh, I wouldn't fool around too much with uh, altering these, uh, but certainly have a good time uh, picking different stitches and playing with that. I, to me, that's the fun of this machine. And people will tell you uh, and again, I'm going to go back to that Facebook group. They're like, you know, you don't need all those stitches. You're not going to use them. Let me just show you again. They told me, they said, you're never going to use all of these decorative stitches. You don't need them. And you know what? I do use them. I love them. <laughs> but I'm, you know, I'm just extra that way. I like being able to uh, use something pretty for finishing a hem. Like I sew pajama pants and it's really pretty if you use something like this to sew your hem on the bottom of your pants. It looks great. Um, I've used this one on Christmas napkins. I thought it was adorable. I sew, like I told you, the little bags. Um, there are ways that you can put in solid color panels and then I'll come down and go through these decorative stitches and really enjoy them. And these little ones down here that look like the flowers, I mean, they are so European looking to me. And I think they're just perfect for a little girl's dress. So um, I would say don't discount <laughs> Uh, the interest you might find you have in playing with some of these stitches because they decorate simple things like napkins and placemats and little simple things that you might sew for children, even your own pajama pants, like, you know, picking something fun for a hem. I think that's what sewing is all about. It's personalizing it the way that you like it. And this machine comes with... Um, six different buttonholers. I haven't used any of those. I've never sewn anything that needed a buttonhole, so I haven't tried those out yet. Uh, I can't speak to how they work, but uh, you know, I will, I will uh, figure that out for you and share it. What I also liked about this machine was that it has like this honeycomb stitch and all of these different zigzags, and you have a whole section of zigzag stitches which are nice if you're going to sew anything in a knit fabric. Uh, also if you're going to sew anything in flannel. Uh, what I have learned about flannel is that even though it's a cotton it behaves uh, sort of like uh, a knit with a little bit of stretch and you will get a better result sewing uh, any kind of flannel if you use a zigzag and uh, we're going to be sewing flannel so you will want to have your zigzag stitches ready and uh, again uh, this zigzag uh, I have seen people use that to sort of approximate the look of a serger and it 
does the same function as a serger. So if you don't have a serge to finish your uh, seams, you can use this honeycomb. Just, I don't know, I, I like having access to different stitches. I think that's really fun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it has these. The, the machine uh, that I use at Joann's, the patchwork, it has a few more even than this. Um, so, uh, if you can't find the brilliance, which is what I'm showing you here, and you have access to patchwork, that is a nice machine, I will tell you. It sews very well. It is a very, very nice little machine. Um, but I, I like my brilliance. I, I, don't, I don't get unhappy that I have to come home and sew on this one. <laughs> on the top of the machine, here are all of your instructions on how to thread everything. And it's very clearly printed. I think it's easy to follow so we know where our thread guides are and the um, order that we want to run the thread when we um, set the machine up for sewing. And uh, here you can see is your little gauge that you're going to use for winding your bobbin. And here is the diagram for uh, setting that up. And you can see that uh, they want you to first come under uh, the back thread guide, number one. And then we're going to do a loop-to-loop -loop around this tension guide. And then we'll come over and um, run our bobbin. Uh, so I just feel like it's very clearly explained where everything goes. Down here on the throat plate of the machine, you can see it's got all your standard um, seam sizes guides clearly marked out so uh, you can follow along with those. Here are your feed dogs. This is the all-purpose uh, presser foot. I use this most of the time. It's got that nice wide uh, opening for the needle and you know this is super important if you're going to um, move your needle back and forth or play with these stitches because you can see as I'm scrolling through the um, stitch selections, the needle moves. And it's going to be varying uh, widths. And generally, if you had like a really um, basic machine, it would only have to do with the, the width of your zigzag stitch. But on this machine, because it has the decorative stitches, they also require some width. So you want to make sure you have the right presser foot on before you start playing with those stitches. And this all-purpose is a good one because this is plenty wide. Uh, you want to make sure that's in place uh, because if you're playing with stitches and you don't have this wide opening, your needle will come down and hit the metal. And not only uh, will you ruin the needle? You could actually bend something in the housing, and you don't want to, you know, do anything to damage your machine. So make sure that you have your correct presser foot on the machine as you're playing. And I do recommend this all-purpose foot uh, while you're getting acquainted with it because, you know, it's fine. You can put any any um, stitch pattern that you want to uh, set up. It, it will work fine in here. Uh, this machine has an automatic threader, which I really like. Um, I'll show you how to use that, and um, we'll do that in a different video. I'll do like a how to set up the thread and all of that. Otherwise, the video gets too long. The only thing that this machine did not have that I wish it had was the button that you press to bring the needle up and down. So a lot of machines, uh, like my Kenmore has that little button where you press the button and the needle goes down. And that's nice to have because then when you, uh, say you finish your, um, your line of stitching, if you have engaged the needle using that down button, when you get to the end of that seam that you're sewing, the uh, needle will stay in the fabric. This is really nice if you're doing something where you're sewing squares, like a bag or a little sachet or something like that. Um, then your needle will stay in the fabric because if you're not paying attention, 
you can make the mistake of uh, lifting the presser foot, turning the fabric, and not have the, the needle down. So um, you do have to really pay attention to that. that. That is a feature I wish that it had that it does not. But, um, you know, again, it's allowed me to really play with some things that I had not had access to before. And I have enjoyed that. And it also let me learn how to work with the um, the bobbin case as opposed to the, the drop-in bobbin. And that was a good lesson because I've had students uh, come into Joann's and not know how to do those. And I've been able to uh, help them with that. Okay, let me change the angle. And I'm going to show you um, sewing a couple of uh, lines of stitches. And we'll do a couple of different decorative stitches so you can see it doing that. My machine is threaded and it's ready to go and I've already sewn a couple of lines of decorative stitches. Uh, let's go ahead and do another one now and I'll show you all of them um, at one time. So uh, when you want to change your stitches, uh, let's just pick something from here. Um, let's pick 54. So see how that needle moves back and forth. So when you're setting up to do your decorative stitches, you do not want the needle engaged because uh, you don't want the needle down in the fabric and moving back and forth. So we set up our stitch and then we're gonna put down our presser foot and then turn the uh, wheel towards you to engage and then we're going to sew. Let's change what we're going, what we're doing. We'll just do a different. Uh, so that was um, 54. Uh, let's let's go to 64 and see how much that needle moved. So it was good. I didn't have it in the fabric. And then we'll sew. And you can see I'm just lightly guiding that um, just lightly guiding the fabric. The feed dogs do all the work. Okay, and now we're at the end of that. So let's go back to a regular straight stitch. And then when we get to the end, lock, lock it in by doing some back stitching. And then there we go. And there we have this nice line of stitching. And let me change the angle so that you can see this more clearly. And here's all of our lines of stitches and like I already done these two and then I did this for you just now on camera and I, it sews really nice and you can see how it went from this design to this design to a straight stitch and I didn't have to change anything I'm just set up in the general um, recommended thread tension and it sews beautifully and I'm show you the back you can see that and look at how gorgeous that is. So you can see that going from all the different um, program stitches uh, and just running it on the recommended thread tension, it does beautifully. So if you're having problems with your uh, stitches, the likelihood is that um, you don't have your thread tension right. And that's that's a whole other video. <laughs> we'll get into that in a different video. But I did want you to see um, just how nicely this machine sews and all of the things that it can do. And um, yeah, I, I personally love the machine and highly recommend it. So you can see that 
the machine sews the decorative stitches beautifully. It will sew your straight seams really beautifully. Um, so let's talk about who this machine is for. This machine is for really any beginner. If you want to try out decorative stitching, this is a great way to go about it. It's for people sewing smaller projects, so simple bags, uh, housewares, um, uh, lighter clothing, things like that. It's a lightweight machine. I would not suggest or recommend that you try sewing, uh, let's say, jeans. I don't think the machine is going to handle jeans. You might sew a few pairs on it, but if you're getting this because you want to do heavy duty sewing, you want to sew denim, you want to sew canvas, um, this is not your machine you're going to need to get something that's like really heavy duty. I personally sew mostly lighter weight stuff, um, even in terms of bags. So I do sew some zipper pouches. I really like those. They're quilting cotton. They might have one layer of interface. If you're going to sew those heavier bags with all the like super stiff, I don't even know what they're using, the polys, I don't know. I don't sew those kind of bags. I don't know all the terms for the the, the bits and pieces that go into them. But I, strapping, if you're going to sew strapping, if you're going to sew all those heavy bags, this is not your machine. <laughs> okay, this is just not. If you're happy to sew like little pencil cases, lightweight bags, drawstring bags, uh, anything light, the, the machine is wonderful. You'll enjoy it. You'll have a good time with it. So uh, I have had people ask me about heavy duty sewing and no, <laughs> I, would, I would not try that on this machine. It's not designed for that. I also wouldn't try to do like a, a free motion quilting king size bedspread. Um, I, think, I think you're going to wear the machine out on that. It's not really designed for a project of that magnitude. Do you want to do a simple baby quilt, a simple lap quilt? Okay, I think it'll do fine. Uh, but don't don't try to make the machine into something it's not and use it for projects that are just over and above what it's designed for. But if you're doing just general, all-purpose kind of sewing, you want to make an apron. It's great for that. You want to sew napkins. It's great for that. And you'll enjoy it and you'll get some use out of it. That's my take on it anyway. So that's what I have to say about the Singer Brilliance 6180. I think it's a really nice little machine. If you happen to see it when you're out and about and you're considering a machine, if you're in the market for a sewing machine, I, I definitely recommend it. it. It doesn't do everything. It's not perfect, but nothing is. But I think for the price point and the value that you get for that price point, it's totally worth it. And so, yeah, jump in, grab it, enjoy it, and uh, happy sewing. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video.